Hi guys, it's Claire. Welcome back. Today I wanted to talk to you about two books that I read recently, and those books are Human Acts and The Vegetarian, both of which were written by South Korean author Han Kong and translated by Deborah Smith. I had very different reactions to these books, so I thought I would just talk about them in the order that I read them. At the beginning of the month, I read Human Acts, and I read this as a buddy read with Vanessa from Split Reads, which was a really fantastic experience. And I went into this book with really, really high expectations because I'd heard some fantastic things about it and I would say that by the end of this book those expectations were met at least on an emotional level but it was a really interesting reading experience because for much of the book I wasn't really sure how I felt about it just for some quick background this book centers around the Gwangju uprising that occurred in South Korea in May 1980 and that event basically involved a bunch of students and civilians in Gwangju protesting for more democratic rights. And that protest was met with an unprecedented sort of military crackdown that led to the deaths of anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 civilians who were slaughtered and beaten in the streets of Gwangju. And I went into this book knowing almost nothing about Korean or South Korean history, and I don't think that's a prerequisite for reading this book, especially because there is an introduction from the trans later Deborah Smith where she provides a little bit of historical context for you. And this book is much more about the emotional and human impact of this event rather than about the historical or political specifics of it. But I will say that not knowing the full historical context does make the beginning of this book a little bit disorienting. This book is composed of the stories of seven different people who are all connected to the Gwangju uprising in some way. And as the book goes on, you realize that these stories are all interconnected and interwoven, sometimes in very subtle ways. The first section of this book follows a young 15-year-old boy named Dong Ho who is looking for the body of his friend during the uprising, and all of the successive stories after that take place a little bit farther away time-wise from the actual uprising. So you start in 1980 in Gwangju, and from there the stories kind of spread outward and take place in 1985, 1990, 2002, all the way up to 2013, which is when this book was written. And I think that structure is really effective because it shows you the long arc of trauma and human suffering that this one event imprints on so many people's lives. And by following people many years and decades after the uprising, it also shows you how even for the people who survived the uprising, their lives are fundamentally changed. And in some cases, their lives are altered sort of beyond repair. And in many ways, I think that just impresses upon you the extent of the human loss created in the wake of this event. And this book really does not flinch in the face of violence and human suffering. It doesn't look like much, but this is a heavy and absolutely brutal book. There are a couple of points in this book where I almost felt like I had to turn off my emotional response to anything because it is so relentless and you are just barraged with all of these horrible things that people experience and you almost become numb to it because it's almost unbearable. And I think in the end the brevity of this book is working in its favor because it kind of approaches being too much, but doesn't fully cross that line. And one of the other things that I struggled a little bit with in this book was connecting to the characters. And that always happens to me when I'm reading a book where the perspectives are split between a number of different characters. And in this book in particular, you don't spend a ton of time with any one character. And you learn more about their suffering, I would say, than you learn about their individuality or their personalities or their specific lives. The focus is really on the things that they have endured. On that level, the character of Dong Ho really saved this book for me. He's the 15-year-old boy that this book opens with, and Dong Ho is a presence and an image and a memory in some cases that recurs throughout this book. He's very much the ever-present heartbeat of this book, and he's the emotional thread that ties all of these stories 
stories together. And not to give anything away, but the last couple chapters of this book tie in more directly to Dong Ho's storyline, and the second to last chapter in particular just bowled me over. Like, I'm not someone who cries much when I read, and I had to put this book down because I was just losing it. It was so emotionally powerful. And in some ways I worry that I'm having a little bit of peak end bias with this book where I kind of forget my quibbles with the other sections of the book because the Dong Ho storyline just hit me so hard and absolutely lodged itself in my heart. But even with its flaws, I do think this book gives you a lot to think about, and I think it has a lot of layers. And I have to say that the farther out I get from having read this book, the more it continues to linger with me, which I think is the sign of a great book. And it was while I was kind of still on that high after finishing Human Acts that I decided to pick up The Vegetarian because I was curious about reading some of Hong Kong's other works. And unfortunately, I didn't really like this book. In case you don't already know, the premise of this book is that a woman called Young Hee announces to her husband one day that she has decided to stop eating meat. The book is split into three distinct sections and each one is told from a different person's perspective. The first one being that of Young Hee's husband, the second one being that of her brother-in-law, and the last one being that of her sister. And because none of this book is actually told from the perspective of Young Hee herself, she remains a kind of obscure and mysterious figure at the center of the book. And I understand what this book is trying to do on an intellectual level, and I understand what it's trying to do in terms of tackling these different and difficult themes, which include but are not limited to gender roles, sexual objectification and abuse, issues of consent and women's control over their own lives and their own bodies. And I find all of those topics very interesting and important, but a lot of times while reading this book, I felt like Hong Kong was more interested in trying to make points rather than in trying to tell a compelling story. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that I really struggled to find a sort of emotional anchor in this book. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Young Hee is kind of opaque and difficult to penetrate throughout this book. And I understand why Hong Kong is doing that, and I think it's interesting because the fact that she doesn't get her own point of view at any point in the book sort of underscores her lack of agency and the ways in which other people are trying to control her throughout the book. And I think that's interesting and clever and effective, but it also leaves me a little bit cold. I think the closest I got to connecting with any of the characters was in the final section of the book, which centers on Young Hee's sister, who has taken it upon herself to take care of Young Hee as her health continues to decline. And I think that if this whole book had focused on those two women and their relationship with each other and the different ways in which they are oppressed by society and the people around them, the book might have been more interesting and compelling to me. Instead, what happened is that I spent the first two thirds of this book, which focus on the two men in the story, Young Hee's husband and Young Hee's brother-in-law, and I spent those sections trying to figure out what was going on and figuring out who this book was about and what this book was about. And then in the third section, it just felt like all of the symbolism in the book kind of came to the fore, and especially in the last 20 pages, Hong Kong kind of spelled out the whole meaning of this book for you in like huge magic marker. It's like the book did this 180 from being almost too subtle and inscrutable to kind of just hitting you over the head with the meaning of all of these symbols and the meaning of the book. And I just found it very heavy handed and very on the nose. And I even had some sections where I wrote like ugh in the margins because it was just so spelled out for you. I don't know, this book was just a miss for me. Sorry to end on a downer note. All that being said, I do really recommend that you check out Human Acts. And if you've read anything by Han Kong or if you have thoughts on her books or Deborah Smith's translation, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye.